Okay, so we just talked about precipitate, I'm sorry, double replacement reactions. And the two type of double replacement reactions are precipitation and acid base. Now I'm going to talk about a whole other set of reactions called redox reactions or oxidation reduction. For short, they call them redox. Um, and in a redox reaction, you actually gain and lose electrons. In the double replacement, there is no gain or loss of electrons. However many electrons your ion has at the beginning, that's how much it has at the end. But in this case, you start losing and gaining electrons. Um, and losing electrons is what's called oxidation. And gaining electrons is what's called reduction. The way uh, a lot of people remain, uh, memorize it is oil rig. Oil rig. So oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. Another way to remember it, how I remembered it, is uh, oxidation has an O in it, just like the word loss. So however you want to memorize it, it's fine. Just know it. Okay, so in this case, they're kind of showing you a zinc and a copper reaction. So you have zinc metal, all right? This metal right here is zinc, so zinc metal. And the oxidation state of any element in the elemental state is a zero charge. Sometimes people put a zero up there. And then you're reacting it with copper ions. Most likely this is a copper nitrate solution, okay? Because we know that all nitrates are soluble. So most of the time you have a, um, a nitrate. And what's happening is electrons from the zinc are going to the copper. So the zinc is giving the copper electrons, all right? You can kind of see it here, how zinc, you know, is on the surface right here, and it gives the two electrons to zinc. And then zinc becomes ionized, and copper becomes a metal, all right? So these kind of are switching places. Your copper now becomes a metal, which has a zero charge because it's the element. Zinc always has a two plus charge, so you form zinc nitrate as your product, okay? And this is a type of a redox. It's called a single replacement. We will learn about it. But this is the difference between these types of reactions and the previous reactions. We have changing of electrons, okay? And it's actually called oxidation states or oxidation numbers, okay? Up until now, we've been calling it charges. I've been saying the charge on this is a two plus or it's a one minus. Well, in reality, they're called oxidation numbers, okay? And there's kind of a few rules that you kind of have to know. The first thing is element or the elemental form or the elemental state is always zero. I just talked about that in the previous example. If you have zinc, the element zinc. So we're talking about the, so if you have like a hunk of iron, that's the element of iron, okay? Um, if you have a, a hunk of sodium, sodium metal, that has an oxidation state of zero. If it's the element, it is zero, okay? Also, don't forget your diatomic molecules. We've learned about these earlier. Now we're gonna really start using them, the, the diatomic molecules, okay? Remember, it's have no fear of ice cold beer. Have no fear of ice cold beer. These seven atoms exist in the elemental state as diatomics. That means if we talk about the element of hydrogen, the element of hydrogen, it's H2, it's not H. H doesn't really exist in, in our uh, environment. Hydrogen in the elemental form exists as H2. It has a zero charge, all right? It's zero charge and it's the elemental state. So if you look down here, they kind of show you an example. So hydrogen plus fluorine, fluorine is one of the diatomics as well. So this has a zero charge and this has a zero charge. Form HF, which your H now has a plus one and your fluorine has a minus one. All right, and notice what happened to the hydrogen. The hydrogen lost electrons, right? It became more positive. So it lost an electron, so the hydrogen is being oxidized. The fluorine went from zero to a negative number. It gained electrons, it became more negative. So this got reduced. All right, up here, they kind of show you the same thing. Zinc went from a zero charge to a plus two charge. It lost two electrons. Therefore, it is oxidized. Your copper went from a plus to a zero. It became technically less positive or more negative. So it gained electrons, so it was reduced. All right, you gotta remember this is backwards of math. The more positive you're getting, you are actually gaining things. You're not losing it, okay? So, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, um, yes. The more positive, you're losing electrons, not gaining electrons, okay? Um, so that's, so always remember this. Whenever we're talking about the elements of something, um, it's always uh, has an overall charge of zero. And just remember the seven diatomic molecules, okay? 
Um, their rules are a little like, well, I'll, I'll just go how, how they do it here. In class, I do it a little different, but I'll do it how they do it here. Um, let's talk about the oxidation number of like a polyatomic ion, okay? Polyatomic ion, like let's take NO3 for an example, has a minus one charge. This works for polyatomic ions. Things are different. We learned on the periodic table that oxygen has a minus two and nitrogen always has a uh, minus three. Well, that's not true in this case, okay? Now, the one thing you do have to remember is that oxygen will always have a minus two oxidation no matter what, unless it's in the oxidation state. Unless it's O2, then it's gonna have a zero charge, okay? Oxygen always, always, always has a minus two. So this oxygen right here has an overall charge of minus two. Well, the oxidation state of this nitrogen, we have to figure out. It's not minus three. It's only minus three when it's a monatomic ion, okay? Which we learned, monatomic ions we learned, you look at the periodic table, nitrogen's in the 5A row, it has to get to eight, so eight minus five is three, and nitrogen wants to gain three, so it always has a minus three. That's nitrogen as a monatomic all by itself. But when it's paired up with oxygen, it changes its oxidation state. And that's what we're gonna figure out. And the way you do it is the sum of all of the oxidation states or the numbers of all these atoms equals minus one, okay? So it tells you right here, oxidation numbers must sum to zero for any molecule, which is not what we're talking about right now. It must, so here's what we're talking about. Sum to the charge on the polyatomic ion, okay? You must have a sum, I'll, I'll talk about the first part in a second. So that means your nitrogen plus each of your oxygens must equal negative one. Notice I have three oxygens, that's why I got three of them here, okay? So these oxidations must equal negative one. That's how we get the negative one. So what's the oxidation of nitrogen? Well, if each oxygen is minus two, so it's nitrogen minus two, minus two, minus two equals minus one. So this is nitrogen minus uh, six equals minus one. Therefore, your nitrogen has a positive five oxidation. So this nitrogen is actually a plus five, okay? And each oxygen is a minus one. I'm sorry, a minus two. Each oxygen is a minus two, okay? So that's how we figure out oxidations of polyatomic ions. The first part, the oxidation number must sum zero for any molecule. So let's say I have potassium nitrate, okay? This is a molecule. What's the overall charge of this whole entire thing? Well, the overall charge is zero, right? Because I don't have a charge. That's the whole point of writing formulas. Formulas don't have, have a zero charge. You have to balance everything out. So what's the charge on my potassium? Well, if, if each oxygen is a minus two, which gives me a minus six, and the nitrogen is a positive five, this has to equal zero. So the potassium is a plus one. Now, you can do it this way or just look off the periodic table and you know that potassium is a plus one. That's what you memorized. So basically, you, this isn't a rule that you have to memorize. It just realize that when you're talking about monatomic ions, let me erase some of this. If you are talking about monatomic ions, it's the charge that we've already learned. Okay, so monatomics, okay, um, we learned we learned this, okay? So like everything in the 1A, what's the oxidation state of all the 1As? Positive one. What's all the oxidation states of the 2As? Like calcium, strontium, barium, magnesium, those are plus two. This isn't anything new. It's just a different name for something that we've already learned. We learned charges, we learned how to do these charges. Mostly, I wanna emphasize on the polyatomic part, this part of it right here. That's new, that's something that we haven't seen, okay? Now, they kind of go through some more rules here that we've already talked about, but some of the things I want to highlight is number one, fluorine always, always, always will have a negative one. There is no exception. Well, that's not true. F2, what's the overall charge on F2? Well, F2, remember, is in the elemental state, so this has a zero charge. But if we have fluorine in a, in a, in a polyatomic ion, like if we have like FO3, okay, um, fluorine will still have a minus one charge. Okay, this will always have a, uh, first of all, this does not exist, but if it did exist, this would still have a minus char one charge. Oxygen always has minus two. So technically your charge on here would be a minus seven, but that does not exist. So I don't even wanna 
put that even in there. But the point is, is whenever you see fluorine, it will always have a minus one charge. All right. Anything in group 1A and 2A, we've already learned, even you can even put 3A here, always have the normal charges that we've talked about. These are monatomics. Okay. Hydrogen pretty much always has a plus one. Sometimes it could have a minus one. All right. Um, we're not really going to see that many examples. That's when you have a metal hydride. So you have a metal attached to hydrogen. Like here, lithium hydride, calcium hydride. That should be CAH with a small two. Okay. So as far as we're concerned, it's always going to have a plus one. Oxygen always, always, always has a minus two. Always has a minus two. All right, group seven A's, other than fluorine, okay, in the monatomic form, have a minus one, but they can also have other charges. All right, plus one, plus fives, plus sevens, they can have any possible charge. All right, really the rules I want you to remember is this, fluorine minus one, hydrogen plus one, oxygen minus two, and then pretty much the, um, that looks like HH, hydrogen plus one. Oxygen minus two. That's what you have to know, and you already know that. Okay. Everything else can have a different oxidation if it's in a polyatomic ion. All right. <clears throat> I'm not going to go over this. This is something that you can. Uh, this is how they go over it. Um, it's kind of their way of doing these circles and squares. I don't care if you do this or not. This is not how I've learned or how I taught. Um, but basically, imagine we have potassium permanganate, and you want to find the oxidation states for all of them. Okay, well, the, the two ions this is composed of is potassium and the permanganate ion. Well, we know potassium is a plus one, so I'm done. I don't have to figure out anything else. Potassium is plus one. How do I know that? Well, potassium is in the 1A row. It's a monatomic ion. It has plus one. The, the polyatomic is really the one where we have to do that trick. First of all, what's oxygen? We always know oxygen. That is a minus two. That was from the previous slide. Oxygen is always a minus two, obviously, unless it's in the um, uh, elemental state. So how do I figure out the manganese? Well, manganese plus all four of my oxygens must equal what? Minus one must equal this. Okay. Well, manganese, and then I have four oxygen. So minus eight equals minus one. So my manganese has to be a plus seven. There's your answer. Okay. If you want to use this box system, go ahead. Um, basically, I'm doing the exact same thing, but I'm doing it in an algebraic form. Um, they just kind of say, okay, your potassium is one. Your oxygen, I know, is minus two. There's eight of them, so that's minus eight. So then I solve for that number right there, which we already did as a positive seven. Do it however you want, whatever, whichever way makes sense. Just know how to do it. Okay. Um, so here's some practice problems and how to figure them out. I'm just going to do this one right here since that's the one we is kind of the new one that we've been kind of doing. Okay. So CO3, 2 minus. Why don't you put this on pause, figure out the oxidation states of both atoms, and then come back. All right. Welcome back. Um, if you didn't do it yet, do it right now. I'm going to start doing this. Okay. First of all, the oxygen easy minus two i don't have to do anything i already know every oxygen unless elemental and remember how do you know if it's elemental because i just have o2 i don't have anything else attached to it so ca uh, carbon minus six equals minus two all right okay so this is pretty easy your carbon is going to have a positive four oxidation all right um you can do the other three problems kind of good practice problems for you to work on. Um, and then when you think you got it, go on to the next section. All right, here are some types of redox reactions. Actually, you know what, I'm going to put this on pause. And when I come back, we will talk about the types of redox reactions.